Today I, I'm just uh, outside my hometown, Fordingbridge. I am up on God's Hill. I've parked at the first car park as you leave Fordingbridge. And uh, yeah, look around us. Beautifully misty. I've walked about 150 yards from the car and it's somewhere in there. Um, so yeah, maybe first things first here, make sure if you are going out in the mist, um, you're very familiar with your surroundings. I almost have it, I don't know, sounds a bit mental, but I have this little map in my head. I know where there's a tree, I know where there's a path, if I stay on it, I can get back to the car sort of thing. So you've got to have those things in mind and he should be reasonably safe. And I'm, I'm not sure if I'm gonna to go too far away from the car, to be fair. A lot of the things I want are up here. Lovely tree right here. Last time I came here, there was, um, there was some gnarly twigs caught up in it. And it was the only thing that was just upsetting the composition. So I've come back to see if I can do something with this. And it's not in the angle that I first anticipated. It's actually a totally different angle because if you look behind that, there's nothing behind it, just a tree on its own. And I think that's beautiful. Um, whereas my previous angle would have been somewhere off this side, but I can't because that tree will show up. So I, I must have been thinking if there was a sunrise behind it, which the sunrise is in that direction, I'd be able to do something with that. Um, but never thought of it on a misty day. And I really do like the tree, so I'm gonna see if I can set up for this one. This will be my first composition. I do like it. I'm just gonna look for a cleaner comp of it. I think I'm gonna to have to include, there's a little, tiny little clump of stuff here. I didn't want to include it, but I don't know, maybe Photoshop will let me do something with it. Right, let's set up for this. Now, I don't need to worry about the height that I set this tripod up so much because of the mist behind it. Had there been a hedge line or something like that, I might have, I might have had to get down really low so that I can separate the branches from the horizon in the background. But here, I don't need to worry about it. As you can see in the picture, it's looking pretty much clear underneath it. So it's a clear def defined tree, if you like. I haven't got to worry about it. I'm going to start off with the 24 to 70 mil. Um, this mist feels a little bit like a, a spray when you're walking through it. Um, because that's what mist is, it's, it's water droplets. So I'm going to keep the lens hood on because I don't want those droplets forming on my lens. So that should be able to shield some of that off. I 
This is a very popular dog walking spot and I haven't seen a dog walker yet. So I'm just gonna have a look to see if this is any good in square composition. Which is that one. I'm gonna go for um, F5 as my aperture because I want it to add to the mist. It might be able to off offer a bit more soft focus. And of course, I want the whites to be white, so... Uh, actually... Doo -doo -doo. I've got... a shooting bank that's still active. And pop it back to landscape. I'll say 64. Let that light in. So I'm just going to show you something. I'm bringing, bringing the camera in. Because it's mist, it's white. Now I know that whites are up this end of the graph. And that's where you want to position your histogram. So work towards getting that histogram as close to that edge as you can. You don't want it right up against it, you just want it up enough that you can just manipulate it a tiny little bit more maybe in Photoshop or Lightroom, whichever you use. So that's that. Pop you back. I'm gonna set it to timer. Take a shot and check to see if it's sharp. I'll take a few more shots to make sure. It's just a simple, clean composition. There's nothing special about it. I might even try low just to see if that does actually do anything. I think what it will do is it will allow me to remove some of the green grass in the foreground. It will make it a bit more shallower in the picture. So you see more white behind it. Um, right, let's have a go with that. I may just allow a bit more aperture. Let's try 7.1. Now, because I've done 7.1, that means I've got to open my, uh, well, delay the shutter a little bit longer. So I'm at one sixth of a second. I'll say 64. Take a few of them. I quite like, um, so I'm switching between the square composition, uh, the square crop, sorry, and the, um, um, oh, what is it, three by four? <laughs> and the more, the more I think about it, maybe the one with more space around it is probably better, but I let you decide if you're taking a shot similar to this, what works for you. I like, I like the empty space around it. There's nothing of any distraction around it, so it's good. So that's 
past that shot. Let's go look for another. Cool. Yeah, another little bit of information about this location is uh, it's made quite famous in the States um, because of a pub called The Fighting Cox, which is just down the road. And there's also a, um, a holiday like log cabin resort um, called Sandy Balls. Um, and wasn't mentioned, but I'm gonna to add to that list. Just down the bottom of this hill that I'm about to go down, there's a place called Burnt Balls. Um, and I didn't realize I was standing in it until the other day. I looked at an OS map and yeah, interesting, right? Uh, so yeah, I'm gonna head down the hill and see if I can get another um, composition down there. There's a really different looking tree right down the bottom surrounded by water. A um, bit difficult to get to because I've got to cross a ford. But I'm going to head down there, see if I can get a shot of that. So I'll catch up with you in a bit. Bye. It's about three degrees and um, you can probably hear in the background there's a lot of birds singing as, as if it's spring. We should be still in our winter um, but everything's been tricked into thinking spring is here because it is a little bit too mild. Um, now it has been warmer the past couple of days but um, I took a walk down to the river and where it flooded, some frogs have laid their frog spawn in some of the little ponds and lakes. So if we get another freeze, they're as good as dead. Um, yeah, it's really hard. I mean, I don't really want to get into climate change um, because I don't know enough about it, and I don't know whether we could be doing a lot more about it or if it's too little too late. Um, but that's another reason why I don't want to get into it because, yeah, it's difficult. So right, I'm down at the bottom of God's Hill now. I'm at Ditch End, Ditch End Bottom. Um, as you can see, there's some lovely trees right in the middle down here. I photographed that one last week. I may have a look at doing something down here. Um, I don't know, I'll have a look. I'll walk around and I'll switch the camera back on if I find anything interesting there. Uh, otherwise we'll move on into the forest up the back. I can't explain it, but add mist into any scene and it just makes it a little bit easier to work with um, and it is probably because of its simplicity um, I have photographed this already you see pictures on my Instagram of it with uh, frost all over it this is um, it's almost like a dew on the grass nice little dew on the grass all the way up to it and there's different types of green there's a really sort of uh, warm green and then a mint green heading down towards that tree um, and then you've got this big huge beast that one there oh that one <laughs> um, that one's uh, that's something else I don't know what it is I don't know what it is I've never seen any growth on it though but there was one time, and I have got a photo of it somewhere, of um, a lot of ponies around the base of it. It's like they've all gone there for a meeting. Um, but yeah, that, that shot came out quite nice. That was, I think that was spring, or maybe summer. 
Uh, but anyway, I'm going to concentrate on this little leaning one here. I think this one's my interesting one. Now I'm standing quite far back because if I get close, the, the mist will probably stop working. Um, I might even need a zoom here because that's not working. So yeah, when you get closer to subjects, you'll find that the mist might stop working. So you might have to move back again. And if the breeze picks up just a little bit, it might be enough to move the mist on and you might have to wait for it to come back again. Um, but the mist is forever changing. So if you are hanging around a composition, you might need to stay there a bit longer for it to come back and work for you. All right, I've just switched to the 70 to 200. I'm just gonna change it so that it's not resting all that weight on the camera neck to the lens. So I'm not sure what's gonna work here yet. I like the, there is a, a very faint leading line going up to it, but it's on the wrong side of it. I would like it underneath the arc. At this rate, the tree will be leaning out. Um, I'm just gonna work around here and see if there is something that I can grab. Yeah, I'm a lot further back. So I'm focusing on the tree because there's not a lot else to focus on. I could focus on a foreground um, bit of foliage on the floor, but that's not important to me. What's important is that tree is in focus. I'm on F8. Let's see if that works. Hmm. I might need to get a bit lower. That foliage is looking a bit diagonal off of it. In order to line that foliage up with it, it's easier to get down lower and it will hopefully bring that foliage up level. Otherwise I can just change my angle and not have it in at all. And that would be somewhere over towards that direction. Actually, that might work. We're going to go over there. I haven't got any music to play in between. While you're waiting, holding. So yeah, look, it kind of removes that bit of foliage, which I think is kind of ruining it. I don't mind a little bit of foliage in it, but yeah, I don't want too much. Kind of takes away from what I'm trying to photograph. If you are going to include foliage in the shot, don't let any of it disappear out and cut it off. Um, try and end it on a small clump. Um, that way, it's not too distracting. This not too distracting. What you find is if you're in the woodlands and you're taking pictures of the trees, if you start chopping trees off on the edges, it just doesn't work. I think you need to end a composition with something either in the shot or completely out of the shot, not halfway. Uh, it just seems a bit cleaner. So again, all my histogram is stacked up one end. I'm on F8. Uh, one eighth of the second and RSA 64. Yeah, that could be quite a pleasing image. 
I'm going to try again in one to one, which is square. Oh, that's a bit fiddly. <laughs> so what I've done there is I've also turned off the histogram. I know it's in the right place. I've just turned it off just so I can see a nice clean shot. I don't want to see a little writing on the screen. And yeah, that could work. I'm going to have a go at getting that one as well. There's some beautiful separation. Absolutely stunning. I really like the lean on this tree. I just kind of wish there was something smaller underneath it, maybe a bit further back. I think I'm going to move because I get a feeling this mist is going to start moving soon. I can't see the light, but it is getting a bit lighter up there. Um, yeah, so that's that shot. Hopefully you've seen it on the screen. And uh, we'll move on to our next destination, which is, well, we're going to move on into the forest and see if we can get some shots in there. There's some pine trees in there, which I quite like. And if there's mist between them, let them fade off towards the background, then, you know, this is the, one of those things. It's already playing out in your head and this is an expectation uh, when you get there. So don't blame me if it's different. Anyway, we'll catch up in a bit. I'm not sure if you can see this, but right there is a couple of trees, silver birch I believe, and they are leaning inwards and there's a tiny little tree straight in the middle. I think that makes quite a nice composition. The only thing is, is I don't know whether to include a foreground or just straight take them. So I think I'm going to move in and see if I can find something there. Let's go. I think I'm going to change the lens out and maybe walk around with it for a bit and see if I can find something. There's definitely something here. I feel it. <laughs> um, I'm going to plonk you there. Hopefully you can see me. I'm going to move forward a little bit so you see me a bit better. Yep. Okay, so, yeah, like I said, I think I'm going to change this lens out. I'll have a little look first. But I think this one's too... I mean, at 70 mil, it's going to be pretty tight. Portrait might work. Yeah. I've got some issues here as well with the reflections in the water. I do want to include it, but I might have to use a polarizer to cut through it a little bit. Um, composition might be, not be here. I might need to move forwards just a smidge. Um, it might be either on this corner on this little bit of land that comes out, or it might be on the other side. But it's definitely there somewhere. 
Yeah, I like this one. Change the lens out, walk around hands free, no tripod. Yeah, I won't completely get rid of the reflection, but it will certainly tone them down a little bit so they're not glaring in the lens. Yeah, let's see what we can do here. So I'm in portrait orientation here. I'm trying to include a little bit of the foreground. It's just when the water starts to bend around. I really like this scene. I'm on F8 at the moment, but I'm gonna move it up to F11, I think. I'm just gonna bring this camera forwards as well. And see what I'm doing. So now the camera is in portrait orientation. You've got to imagine that. <laughs> if I put this on its side, the histogram is still up on the right hand side of the uh, graph here. Those are my whites. I want them to stay white, but not quite touch the edge. So that's what I'm going for. Just bringing you back to the right orientation. So what you're seeing there is the lovely little water bit in the foreground. I'm focused on a point on a corner, about a third into the shot, and then it drifts off to these trees in the mist, and then there's a forest behind it. So yeah, that's what I'm going for. Got some lovely little colours in there, dark greens, different types of tones of greens, and uh, some reds and browns from the ferns that have died. But yeah, that's what I'm going for. I'll make a video on the back so you can see it a bit closer. Actually see what I'm shooting. Yeah, this is what I'm going for. Just to show you what the polarizer is doing, I'm going to rotate. You can see the water down below. I'm going to use it with a fair bit of strength there just to tone that water down. It's too bright for me, too much of a distraction. I want you to see it as a bit of a balance and it drifts off into the background. These are trees, the forest is slightly behind it, there's a um, pine forest. Um, behind it, we've got the silver birches leaning in. I really like this composition. I have moved around and it has kind of made that one at the back sort of sit crossing over the branches of this one, which I'm not too sure is going to work, but I'm going to take this shot. I'm focused on this little bit here. And take my shot. So I'm kind of hoping I've got a bit of a leading line there down in the bottom corner that you follow and leads you into the shot. So what I've done is I've moved it and I've chopped off this little bend here. I'm not sure if it's done it any justice, but I don't know. <laughs> it's good to move around a little bit anyway, take a few shots. What I've got to be careful with is I don't get too close because I can see the stream in front of me is starting to bend around and out of the shot. Of course, I don't want your eyes to follow it and then drift out. So I'm going to try a bit lower now. see yeah I could get a reflection in if I'm really good with it or a little bit of a reflection this one could be a winner
really starting to clear up a little bit now, so I think I'm going to keep moving. I could spend too long with that one composition. I just think it works so well with the leaning birches. Anyway, I've got to move on. One of the reasons why I don't like using polarizers when there's mist is because it can cut through the mist as well. And obviously you want the mist in the shot, it adds to it. So it's the whole reason why you're here, right? So be careful when using that filter. Use it with and without. Um, you'll find that your images are you know, be very different. So that's that shot in the bag. Um, there's probably quite a few there that I'm going to show you because I don't know, it's one of those things where you see a scene and you like it so much you just really want to work it. So I'm going to take a little walk up into this wood. Doesn't that look really eerie? Love it. So this is um, Pitt's Wood. Got a little stone there. The whole of the new forest is um, basically the Crown Estate. All belongs to the Crown even. So yeah, I'm just going to carry on walking into this wood, see if I can see any compositions when I get near the top. Um, but I think we are going to see something. And uh, when I do, I'll switch the camera back on. So yeah, I don't know if anyone remembers these little structures when they were kids. I certainly made them when I was in Cub Scouts. Um, but yeah, look at them, they're quite epic. I might see if I can get a photo of these, not included in this little photography thing, but I just love the eerie mist around them. Yeah, let's see if I can get a few shots here. Cool. I think if you are gonna photograph these structures, think about separation. Oh, that's a bit dark. Take that off. Um, it's a little bit darker in the forest, actually. So, I'm going to have to bear that in mind. A little bit more light in. I think that's it. Nice and simple. So with the camera leaning back, you might need to use a bit of Lightroom to tilt the image back to get straight lines in the trees rather than have them leaning away. Look at this. I've just come down off the top. There's a big hill in that direction. <laughs> it's quite steep <laughs> with all this gear. Um, but yeah, it's so beautiful. You just cannot see though um, beyond this wood. So I walked out into an opening and normally you see like rolling hills going over towards um, chip dens or um, some of the other woods over the back but can't see anything um, luckily I know where I'm going I know that if I keep heading in a straight line this way I will eventually come across a gravel path I've just 
stood on one just up here. I've just got another one that I'm going to make my way down to. I'm going, I decided I'm going to head back down towards the stream um, because it thins out a little bit with the trees there and I might be able to do a bit more with it. Loads of lovely silver birch as well. Um, but yeah, just come across this. Look at this. Look at the moss on that. How beautiful is that? So nice. It's, it's, it's a real shame that the tree's gone, but yeah. A couple of hundred years old, assuming it was a pine. There does seem to be something about our woods where we would have a strict pine enclosure and then old. So you got all your beech, birch, holly, all of those sorts of trees will sit on this side. Um, but yeah, this looks like it's already been harvest if you like. Something old has fallen over there. But yeah, just could not get over this. You've got a bit of lichen growing, growing on it. You've got that thick green moss. There's another type of moss there. Yeah, beautiful. And you've got loads of little saplings. I guess that's a good thing come out of all of this. Loads of little saplings. They won't all make it, but the odd few will certainly reach for the skies, I'm sure. Beautiful, absolutely love it. Love it out here in the forest. I feel more at home here than I do actually at home. <laughs> anyway. Let's keep walking. Oh, that's quite interesting. Check this out. Is that like a little sapling dude growing out of the middle of a stump? This one's rotted so much, but that's growing out of it. Now that's something, isn't it? That's called recycling. <laughs> Oh, you got like, um, I've forgotten what they're called, are they elf cups or something? Tiny little shape of a beaker with a little stem on it. Beautiful. Anyway, onwards and upwards or downwards now. I'm going to head down into the valley, hopefully find the little river that's running through the middle and see if I can get maybe one last composition before I head home. Oh, look at that. Little yew tree. Look at that. That's something, isn't it? This is what I love about just walking around. You just stumble on things. I couldn't make a composition of it, I don't think, because there's too much. If the holly wasn't around it, that would be a beautiful tree. Look at that. There's just so much holly around it there. I might see if I can get it anyway. It's just, uh, yeah. Hmm. <laughs> Let's see if we can make it work. The um, mist has thinned a bit, the breeze has picked up, and I don't know if you can hear it. The droplets dropping off the trees are massive now. <laughs> I think what's happened is the dew or the mist is building up on the branches and then the drops are merging into one bigger drop and then just dropping off the trees. It's definitely not raining, I'm sure. 
Um, but yeah, should we have a go with that? I don't know. I think I might be flogging a dead horse here. I just get it just to have it in the bank. <laughs> um, I'll set you up on a tripod somewhere. I think I'm going to struggle in this area for this shot, but I've got to have a go, haven't I? What I might do, just try and work a part of the tree and make a particular part of the tree the composition rather than try and get all of it. All right, I quite like that, so. I'm going for F8 because I want to throw the background out. I've got one over six of a, a sixth of a second, ISO 64. I've got some lovely moss on here and there's beautiful lines on it. Absolutely stunning lines. I've got another one there. Some of this is just messy because there's so much going on. Because I'm shooting up, I'm getting a lot of the background sky. But what I might do actually is just expose for the log, not for the, don't care much for the background. I just want a good exposure on my tree. So yeah, I may show you them. <laughs> I just wish this guy wasn't in the way, but this is really dense, thick rot. The, um, the weathering on this tree after it's died is obviously quite harsh because you've got really defined lines going deep into that trunk. Yeah, impressive tree. Anyway, we're going to head down and see if we can find one last composition. And then uh, I think I'm going to head home, I think, because I'm getting a bit hungry. <laughs> anyway, let's go. So this is what I was hoping for. As I came down here, I'm very familiar with this spot. Um, it's thinned out a little bit right near this stream and you've got some um, really lovely whites on the silver birches. And this really works for me. So we're gonna head on down and uh, see if we can find a few trees down there that we can work with. I've not actually photographed very much down here. So, got to find something first. Um, and I've not pre-scouted. I've just walked through here, had a few picnics. So, yeah, let's go. So these do look good. <laughs> However, I'm struggling now. The, the, the mist has lifted a bit down here and it's very messy. Um, I was kind of hoping the dew would be stuck on the grass a little bit as well. Yeah, looking for that mist for separation was something that could have lifted any scene. I think I'm going to head in that direction, which is back towards um, one of the earlier compositions, the three birches leaning in. I think I'm just going to follow this stream and walk down, see if there's anything there. What's weird is I'm looking off in the distance and I'm thinking, 
it's mistio over there and I head there and it's it's not, it's pushing the mist further away. <laughs> it's always going to be that far away unless it really comes back in. I've come slightly up a little bit away from that stream but I've come across this silver birch whoop, in between these two pine trees and I think and I don't know if I'm going to use it to help frame it. Um, let me just show you yeah, enough what it looks like. I've got a bit of a droplet on the lens at the moment. I'll wipe that off in a bit. But that's what I'm looking at. I don't know. <laughs> I might be forcing it. I might be forcing it. I can't. I don't know if I can get further back. And I think my problem is this tree line. I wanted to include it because it gives it a bit more depth. But the problem I have is it's probably too low and that tree is very tall. Or maybe it's because I can't include the foliage from these two pines. It just helps frame it. I don't know. I'm going to see what I can do. I may be forcing it though, like that. I've got to get one more image sort of thing going through my head. But you don't. Let's just swipe you. That better? Yeah, I'm going to try a bit further back and see if I can change it up a little bit. Tiny little clearing here. Okay, so what it's actually doing... <laughs> what it's actually doing is it's making the two trees seem like it's narrowing the gap and the birch is getting bigger. And what you're doing when you walk closer, you're bringing those two trees further apart. So it allows the silver birch to look smaller. And... Ah. <laughs> Do you know, I'm just gonna take the shot and see what it looks like. Back where I was. I don't want you folks getting upset at home if I don't show you this shot. <laughs> All right, there she is. Ooh. There she is. Let's see if we can get a photo. I think my tripod's got to be as high as it will go. I'm even going to extend the neck in the middle. Right, I'm as high as I can get. Um, I'm overexposed, so bring that down. Oh, it may work. I'm going for F14. I want the foreground in all the way to the back. And I'm focused on the sapling in front of me. I may focus a little bit further forwards. My shutter is 1 13th of a second. I think that's it. I'm either going to be pleased with that or I'm not. What I do like is I've not included a really dead 
I think it's a pine in the background. It has no foliage on it, it's just a stick in the air. I want to say it's about 20 metres high. And I didn't want to include it in the shot and I think I've done that. Yeah. I'll show you the shot and if you like it, let me know. If you don't and feel like I forced it, also let me know. <laughs> um, I think I'm going to head down and back towards the car. Um, if I don't start the camera up, this might be it. So please, if you haven't yet, liked and subscribed, please do. It makes all the difference. And uh, don't forget to smash that bell if you want to be notified when my next video is out. Um, until then, uh, see ya. Bye.